welcome to a different format of videos for this time. In this space and framework review, I'm gonna be actually talking about the features that I've implemented in the past few months, because I feel that making a classic video where I list all the features and write what I've done would be a bit too long and too tedious to edit. So this is what I've come up with, and this is gonna be kind of a live talk. Uh, which means uh, this is not scripted and I have not rehearsed this so the only thing that I basically have right now is a list of features that I want to go through and show you <laughs> just to make sure that I don't forget something so let's get this party started okay so the first thing that you can see right away on this menu scene is that the menu scene looks different and why is that because I actually implemented one of the few larger features that I've implemented in this version is going to be a procedural content generation script. So basically this menu scene that you can see is randomly generated every time that you enter the main menu. Uh, one more thing that I'd like to mention since we're here on the menu is that the, that the build of the game itself, the demo, does not need the data folder anymore it basically creates all the folders that it needs and everything else is contained within the scriptable object resource files which are basically exported with the game build so that's great you don't need to copy that lousy data folder around unless you want to like have your save files obviously in your universe okay so let's dive straight into this so the first thing that I really wanted to show is the improved camera controls actually. So if you press H now, you can see that the camera controls are much smoother and it's much easier to actually pilot the ship while looking at the thing you want to look at. So it's much more sensitive and I think it works much better with the gun controls that we have. Now let's switch the turrets into manual mode. Now let's see how that works against this asteroid for example. So if I were to engage this asteroid, I can now track it much more easily. Okay, the next thing that I really wanted to show off, and this is one of the biggest features of this installment, so to say, and that is actually the tactical view. Just as it's found in the Space RTS and Arcade Kit, this tactical view unifies the best features, the most complex features of both frameworks. As you can see it's fully interactive and you can give orders to each ship. You can give orders separately or independently to each of the ships and you can actually also switch into those ships and switch back into them to control them manually. Now also on this list you can see the full contact list on the left side here and we can select each one of these ships and the selection will be of course present on the map. Apart from that uh, the static objects in the sectors such as like stations and jump gates are always visible on the heads of display so that it's very easy to select them while playing the actual game. Okay, so one of our ships just got blown up and we are instantly transported into the other ship. The next thing I wanted to go over is the way you can now order ships on the map. Apart from uh, ordering them to move and to engage enemy ships, you can uh, tell your ships to actually dock to stations straight from the map and to enter jump gates. So for example, let's send this fighter into the into the jump gate and let's switch into our big ship so that we can stay stay with the stay in the sector. Also on the sector map you can see the the dotted red circle which actually represents the uh, the scanner range of the ship. So our big ship will detect everything that is in this range, basically. Okay, so now we're docked to the station. 
which gives us a perfect opportunity to talk about the improved equipment dealer. Now, the equipment dealer was a very buggy thing back in the day, but I think I've improved it enough so that it's very reliable now. You can unmount weapons, you can actually sell weapons, and you can buy other weapons to install them. So now that we undock and go back into our ship, the turrets are still in the manual mode and you can see that our new weapons are mounted. Also you can see that uh, in the left corner here, uh, above the whole display, uh, there is an indicator which shows which uh, pieces of equipment are mounted on your current ship. So if we go into info, you will see that this ship now carries a bleak armor, which is also visible here. You can also activate some equipment items uh, via pressing their hotkeys, so that's 1, 2 and 3 by default and that will also be visible on this display. This armor that we have installed is not activatable, so... Okay, let me just shoot this guy down because he is... Okay, that is annoying, my friend. Let me get try to get rid of this guy. Okay, yeah. So that about covers it. I think this zone is getting pretty hot, so let's jump into this into the next sector. Okay, let's just find the jump gate here. Okay, that's it. So now that we've jumped into the next sector, you can see that there is a, actually a nebula in this sector. And that's another huge feature that I wanted to show you. Now nebulae are also generated procedurally just like the entire system is. And you can see that apart from the colors that are customized, the nebula also has a custom view range. And apart from that, some nebulae can be also corrosive and some can be mineable. So you can mine gases from nebulae. But primarily they're here as a visual effect. Mm less so as a gameplay effect, but of course you can do whatever you want with this. So let's jump into some other sectors to see what they look like and what the random generator comes up with. There are only four backgrounds uh, with this demo, but the one of the things that are randomly generated by the by the sector generator is actually the hue of the background so you can see that most of the sectors will look very different to each other. Okay, let's jump into sector 2 minus 1. No, this one is black. Um, since we're talking about generating stuff in sectors there is also a... Okay, this one seems to be very big. Let me see if there is anything else in this sector. Okay, there's, there's a lot of jump gates, so let's go to this sector. Where this jump gate is? Okay, it's there. Um, since we are discussing generated content, I wanted to touch up on the models that I've added. Apart from two new station modules, uh, there are seven new ship models included with the asset now. The station model uh, is also completely modular so that you can make up your own stations out of pre-existing components. So here's the actual station model, the custom station model. Since we're discussing how stations work, let's actually show you how the improved docking system works. As we can see, we're now on autopilot. And the autopilot is docking this to the station using the waypoints. 
docking the docking system for small ships also got vastly improved so that now it's possible to queue up smaller ships and to demonstrate that I'm going to just exit back to the main menu and start a new game in which we will have two smaller fighters to start with and we will actually tell them to dock at this station simultaneously. So now as we can see they can dock at once so the second fighter here is actually waiting for permission to dock at the station while the first one is on his docking approach. You can see that as the first fighter docks the second one will turn and begin his approach. Okay, you should fight with these guys. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we can see clearly that the second fighter will be docking as well. Oh, very good. Okay, so apart from doing some exploration right here, um, I wanted to show you what the universe map looks like after you've explored some of the galaxy. Now, so you can see that uh, the sectors are generated in a square grid and in each sector you're getting jump gates generated for adjacent sectors. So for example in this sector, which is minus two, two, we can see that, let me just stop, we have jump gates for adjacent sectors. So that, that's minus two, three, minus one, two, minus two, one, and minus three, two. 